Greetings, class, and welcome to week one of CIS 4710, Information Security. I am your instructor, Dr. Brandon Brown. And uh, this week, we're going to go over just a quick, brief look at the syllabus, um, get acquainted with the course, and the first module's lecture. I'll also cover um, a little bit about how the assignments will work throughout the class. So let's go ahead and get started. Share my screen. First off, let me apologize in advance. If you hear a lot of barking, I have three big, huge German shepherds, and they do not like um, the mail carrier, the Amazon person, the UPS person, or anybody else who might be making a delivery to my house as I make these recordings. I will try to edit them out as best I can in post, but if you hear barking, I apologize in advance. So um, welcome to the Canvas course. Um, here's all the pertinent information. Uh, and if the, you see this in a later semester, it may slightly be changed. Um, but the course summary is going to go over when the due dates are for everything. So the only thing that we have um, here for, and I am in the wrong course. I apologize. Oh my gosh, how embarrassing. Let me get into the fall course of 4710. they will have the correct dates. There we go. Yeah, much better. So we have the student learning contract um, that's due this week and then homework one, which is due next week. Um, and this kind of lays out when everything is due. You also find that uh, in the syllabus and you can find the syllabus if you go to modules. You won't see the instructor resources, but you will see The course information, you can find the course syllabus there. And if you bring that up, this is, this will be up to date for every class. So the syllabus will have the correct dates for every class, the grade points for uh, all the assignments when the assignments are due at end of at a, end of what week, right? And it kind of outlines everything. So the book that we go through is the CEH version twelve uh, at time of the creation of this class um you will you can find out information on that book from the bookstore and i may even have some information in here on the syllabus as to i will have information on the syllabus excuse me i should have went back there All right i did not provide a um isbn on that but if you just go to amazon you're not going to the bookstore you might be able to pick this up cheaper on amazon you type in um cehv12 and that is by cybex i believe wiley cybex that's right there okay so Again, that is the book. It's about $41, $45. Uh, it is a good study guide for the CEH. If you want to take the CEH, the CEH is a written exam, not a practical exam, although I think they now have a practical component to it. But this course is an introductory course. And let's go ahead and get started on this week's lecture. So let's go pretty quick, actually. So if we go back to modules. You can pull up the lecture material here in week one. I have the slides right there. And you can download them or pull them up. Um, I am updating these from the old version 11 because it did not come across. So I do have the correct uh, link in here for version 11. Give me one second. Sorry about that. I corrected it as I <laughs> literally in real time. So the slides are correct now in the course um, with the updated version. There's not too many changes to them from the previous version, um, but it does have the correct um, updated dates on it. So this first week, we're going to talk about what it is to be a certified ethical hacker 
or to be an ethical hacker, what is ethical hacking, why it's important, why we do it, the importance of ethics in this profession, and why it's important to follow a code of ethics. So in ethical hacking, um, we use different tools, techniques, procedures to locate weaknesses in applications, networks, systems, you name it. Uh, it could be wired networks, wireless networks, it could be web applications, network applications, network services. And we do this via a methodology of reconnaissance, enumeration, exploitation, analysis, um, and overall um, understanding of security posture in order to improve it, to make recommendations, to get rid of those potential exploits. So as it says here on the slide, keep in mind, almost everything you will be doing is probably illegal in at least one jurisdiction or maybe more. What makes it not illegal is permission. So it is very important that you get signed permission to do this um, before you just go out and do it yourself. If you're getting paid for this type of a service, great. You need to have a contract that spells what you're going out, what you're going to do. Or if the company you are working for, they need to have a contract that um, outlines the statement of work, the rules of engagement, et cetera, uh, in order for you to prosecute uh, that engagement. Okay, so what is ethical hacking? What is pen testing? What is red teaming? A lot of these acronyms or these um, definitions are interchangeable in a lot of ways. But by definition, pen testing is tightly scoped. It has a time frame. It has rules of engagement. Um, it has do's and don'ts. Red teaming is less tightly scoped and usually carte blanche. Within reason, you have a framework um, or a guideline of what you can and cannot do at a target network. And typically, red teaming is not just targeted at machines and web applications and networks, it's targeted at people. So there might be a social engineering component to it. There might be an interaction component to it. Application testing is limited in scope and it's very tight. So you're only gonna be looking at one specific app, web app, uh, system, et cetera, to test the security of that. You see a lot of this in application development. Uh, when new uh, runs are done on an app or new releases are done on software, you go through an application test first. So why is ethical hacking important? Uh, well, you can find all kinds of reasons. This Just open up uh, any news feed and search for um, attack or hack or uh, compromise or breach, and you'll find a whole plethora of information um, fairly recent as to uh, when they um, an attacking government, attacking um, criminal organization, or just, you know, some teenager in his mom's basement um, that carried out an attack. So they give a few different examples of this, but you can go like literally just go and open up Google. Recent cyber attack and get all kinds of information, all right? There's cybercrime magazines now out there. There's Here's something from ABC News on uh, different uh, attacks that have happened from airports to, uh, so it looks like Seattle Airport was like one of the most recent ones here at the beginning of the fall semester 2024. And it happens all the time. This is why jobs such as these are in such high demand because they are used to try to find these flaws before the bad guys and gals do to exploit them. So in doing this, we have to take into consideration of doing no harm, especially in the pen test or red team engagement. Uh, that's why we have a rules of engagement or ROI, what we can and cannot do. And we have to ethically prosecute that um, statement of work uh, with those ROIs um, so that we don't do any harm. So we don't bring a business down because that's the last thing we want to do. Because if we do that, we'll never get asked back to come back and do another engagement. So 
this is where you actually have to have really high standards and morals and ethical behavior when you conduct a pen test or um, a red team exercise. So these ethics basically come from a lot of different areas. I mean, we could go, this is not a philosophy class by any stretch of the imagination. So you just have to kind of keep in mind the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and don't take anything in prod down. <laughs> All right. Keep the needs and goals of your employer, of your client in mind, and do no harm. All right. This can't always be helped. Uh, especially junior pen testers who maybe they don't know what they're doing and they overstep their boundaries and oopsie, I brought down the internet. It happens. Um, hopefully as a junior pen tester or, or as a junior um, uh, ethical hacker, you'll have somebody more senior watching you and giving you guidance so you don't have this happen. And the other way that you can um, make sure this doesn't happen is practice. Practice, practice, build your own lab. Hopefully your employer may have a lab that you can use. You can go in and, and do the and practice and try hack me and hack the box. Uh, you can download um, vulnerable, vulnerable machines from the internet and hone your skills. So they talk about a get out of free jail card. So if you, this only really happens in red team engagements, especially if you're doing like uh, Wi-Fi pen testing or social engineering attacks. Um, so that if you do get caught, you don't get arrested. <laughs> and yes, uh, documentation will save you and, and, and clear your name. Communicate, communicate, communicate. You should always have a point of contact at the client uh, or employer who you can call and say, hey, uh, yeah, security stopped me. Can you please tell them to let me go that, that I'm legit? So it's very important that you, that you keep this um, close at hand. Uh, many organizations and professional organizations will have a code of ethics. So if you join a professional organization like ISACA, right, uh, perfect example, you'll have to adhere to their code of ethics. I'm a certified project management professional. I have to, I provide, I have to prescribe to their code of ethics. Uh, when you get your OSCP, when you get your CPTS or any other, your CEH, you have to prescribe to their code of ethics. And if you violate that code of ethics, that's grounds to have your certification revoked. So don't. And in summary here, uh, ethical hacking is extremely important. It's a skill set that must be taken seriously. Um, pen testing, ethical hacking, red teaming, application testing, they're all kind of interchangeable, but they might have different scope related items to them that um, make them specific to one job area. Do no harm, at least do no deliberate harm. Accidents do happen, trust me, I know. Um, and you know what a get out of jail free card is? This is basically your scope of work for your engagement. So ensure that you have that, ensure that you have points of contact uh, at your client or for your employer so that if you do get caught, and you know what? You want to get caught if you do that, because that means the client is doing things right. And that's cool. And you want to point that out in your um, reports at the very end and go, yeah, they caught me. They did their job. They were great. Clients love to hear that. OK, and but you want to make sure that you don't get arrested. All right. So with that, that closes up the first lecture uh, of the week. We, we cover the syllabus. We cover the first chapter. Um, the only thing due this week is your um, student learning contract. So if you go to modules, go to modules, there we go. You should find that under module one, student learning contract. There's also some other um, tutorials in here, uh, VMware, workstation and fusion uh, installation that's a little bit changed now since broadcom has made it free so uh instead of going through anything from the school you can go to broadcom.com download vmware workstation install it and then you can install kali linux why is that important well i'll get into that in homework one because 
Uh, although you can use the attack box in Try Hack Me, I highly encourage all students to use OpenVPN with a Kali Linux box and use that. Uh, but that's going to wrap it up for us today, this week, for week one. Have a great week, and I will see you next time.